There are few American muscle cars more iconic than the Cobra. A lightweight V8-powered Hellraiser, this car involves all of your senses in the driving experience, making it a perfect vehicle for maximum engagement. But what happens when you remove noise from the sensory experience and replace it with something much more... charged up? Today, we find out. We're driving the Superformance Mark III E, a legitimate Cobra Resto mod powered by electricity. Before we hop into the EV, we have the incredibly difficult job of reminding us what a, uh, what a Cobra is supposed to feel like, or at least has felt like for the last 50 or 60 years. Please. dreaming of driving a Cobra my entire yeah. my entire life. This was the first vehicle I wanted to own. When I was six years old, I built a model car and I just wanted a Cobra. And this car lives up to that hype. I, I was assuming that the whole don't meet your heroes thing was gonna hold true, but I love it. I'm having so much fun and I'm really nervous yeah. that the EV isn't going to capture that magic quite as well as this gas car does. As we transition into that car, can you do us a favor and give us one more downshift pull? With the sights and sounds of the Superformance Mark III fresh in our minds, we hopped into the company's latest creation, the Mark III-E. Just as Carroll Shelby rethought the original AC Cobra, the Mark III-E is a massive shakeup on the typical Superformance creation that the company is so well known for producing. An electric Cobra is not for everyone, but for those with an open mind, the Mark III-E is ready to wow you. First thing is first, and I think it's important to start this segment with it because there's going to be some people that are still hate watching and let's perhaps try to set their minds at ease. This 
is not lacking on power. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. This has the powertrain from a Tesla P100D Model S from a few years back. And in this application, the way Superformance has tuned it, you get 650 horsepower and 1,500 pound-feet of torque available, which <laughs> instantly. Well, and they didn't really want us to tell you this, but that torque number is limited. They had to scale it back to yeah. 1,500 pound-feet. I maybe missed on the other very important metric. This car weighs 2,300 pounds. That is the lightest EV. <laughs> This, this is perhaps the only EV version of a car that weighs less than its, than its base. Yeah. This is 100 pounds lighter than that Mark III 351 that we were in a second ago. We've been driving this thing in the canyons, and we went into skeptics, right? We 100%. have to be honest and yep. say that. We didn't know if we were going to like this, and the Superformance people were telling us, you have to try it before you can really get behind it. I don't even know where to start. The acceleration is absolutely insane. And I use that as a hyperbolic term sometimes in cars. You have to be careful with it because much like the gas car we drove, if you get this wrong, there's no traction control. All yep. there is is I think a section 355 tire at the back, is that right? 355 at the back, 295 up front. That's you, all you get. You really you're... shouldn't be lacking for grip, and yet somehow, if you really want to, you can get this thing to, I mean, it's insane. <laughs> My foot hasn't immediately reached for the brake pedal, and that's because there's some actually pretty serious regen going on here. Uh, they've taken that over from the Tesla, and kind of kept it going. So foot goes off the gas now, or is slowing down 50, 40, 30. I mean, that's all the that's all the braking power you'd need on on any city street. Like on a on a normal commute to the cars and coffee, that's all the that's all the the deceleration that you would need to come up to a stoplight. It's really very aggressive. And we'll talk about the next thing, which I think is really important to express: the V8 in the other car overtakes all of the other noises. Yeah. In this car, you hear the chassis, you hear rocks kick yeah. up underneath it. I mean, you, this is an impeccably constructed fiberglass body tube frame, tube frame chassis car, but it's still, I mean, it's still prone to some of those squeaks and wiggles. You didn't notice those in the V8 car. They are front and center here, and it adds to kind of that vintage driving experience that we thought we were gonna be losing out on by getting rid of the V8. So where does that leave us with the two cars and getting to experience this super special handoff from gas to electric? Well, I think we come from two slightly different positions on this one. Um, I've loved the Cobra since I was four years old. Yeah. It's been my absolute dream car. I have a, and, and no one is driving these things daily. This, this, this car does not actually contribute that much to carbon emissions and things like that. So from my perspective, I really have a hard time buying the idea of a Cobra unless you're getting that insane engine and that, that fantastic exhaust noise to go along with it. You know, if you're, and if you're going for maximum speed and maximum acceleration, you're not necessarily buying a 60 year old car either. Right. So I, I struggle a tiny little bit with the EV component of this super performance car. At the same time, they've absolutely done a wonderful job of making this feel like that fantastic rickety, you know, kind of vintage feeling sports car that you get in the standard Cobra. So I do have to give them credit for that. I think you have a slightly differential opinion though that I'd love to hear. From my side of the fence, I know this car is not going to be for everybody. There's not going to be an immediate 100% acceptance rate with this thing because people want engine noise and I get that. But we're going into a world decades from now, years from now, where things are going to be battery powered. So if we're going to go that way, and we are, I'm glad that there's a space for a car like this that is go that, that's gonna still give you the sensation of a classic car. Yeah. We kind of started out today by wondering, 
does this tick all the boxes of driving a Cobra? And aside from the very obvious soundtrack, everything else for me is still there. Every other cool sensation <laughs> is still there, including a car that can put an absolutely fat smile on your face. Even in a kinder and gentler future, there's absolutely room for a big old slab of 60s muscle. To get the full story on these very special roadsters, head over to motor1.com or you can click the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.